Hello, uh, my name is Dylan Young, and today I will be continuing my series on Moose End, which is the recent acquisition by Sitecore. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I release a new video. If you haven't done so already, we're already into a couple of videos on Moose End, so check out the playlist that's displaying currently to view other videos related to Moose End. So today's video is going to focus on our mailing list and adding a custom field to that mailing list. Uh, custom fields are added per mailing list, so that's important to note. There is ways that you can move a custom field across multiple mailing lists if you have similar mailing lists with similar data, but different lists based on different criteria of users that you're adding. So what we're gonna do is we're we're gonna start off at the mooseend.com and then we're just gonna log into our account. Um, if you haven't already, you should definitely check out some of the other videos I've done so on this topic uh, to, to know how to create an account, etc. cetera. Um, but I'm not gonna show that today. We already have an account and so we're gonna just log into that account. We already in the prior videos talked about how to manage a mailing list. So we're not going to cover that specific topic. We're just going to reuse an existing mailing list. So once we're logged in, you should see this dashboard. If you've run a campaign already, you'll actually see a different dashboard. Um, but if you haven't gone through all the steps yet, you'll see what I'm, I'm showing on the screen. And then we're going to be working on mailing lists. So we'll just click on the mailing list button over here on the left. And then you'll see a list of all the mailing lists that I currently have in my account. Uh, I believe the last one we were working on was the example demo list. So that's what we'll click on. And now you'll see a list of actions that you can take for this mailing list and also some statistical information about this mailing list, which we'll cover more in future videos. So today we're going to be looking at custom fields. So to in order to manage those, all you have to do is click on custom fields. And this will list out the custom fields that you may have already. In this case, I have one for gender. This also lists out non-custom fields, ones that come out of the box as well. So what we want to do today is we're going to create a new custom field. I'm going to create one that is based on a date. So let's go ahead and click on add a new custom field and now this is where we're going to give that a name so i'm just going to say membership sign up date and this is an arbitrary uh, example that i'm providing uh, this is what you could do if you had a date let's say a join date or a membership date or something like that where you wanted to collect that from all the users that are uh, joining this mailing list, this would be helpful to collect. You can then use this information on your segments when you start creating it, or you can personalize the content of those emails using this value that you collect. And we'll show how to collect it and then also how to use it in, a, in future videos. So we're not covering that today. I'm just going to show how to create, simply create that custom field. Uh, we've cr given a name and now you give it a type. So there's five different types that you have. Text is pretty standard and, and pretty much an obvious place where you might put text of some form. So if membership sign up date wasn't necessarily a date, but maybe uh, some sort of classification and maybe there's lots of classifications where single select drop down wouldn't make sense, you could use a text value instead. Um, if, if it was like address information, obviously a text probably makes more sense there because you'd want to collect text, which could be varying uh, lengths of numbers and text, uh, alphanumeric characters, essentially. Date time is obviously what we're going to be using for this example. Uh, so it's just a date time that, that you can select. Number is, you know, maybe monetary uh you know earned income for the the user or it depends on what you're you're basically able to pull from them it could be an age for example although i'd probably choose date of birth instead uh just because 
Age can be hard to determine when that age changes, whereas date time, a date of birth is, is a little bit more useful there. A single select is, is kind of like a, a, t a tag or a classification when there's the set types. Another example I had in there was gender, and that could be female and male, for example. And then checkbox is like a Boolean. So if there's something that you want to track, yes or no, or true or false, then that's when you'd use a checkbox. So today, like I said, I'm just gonna use date time. So I'm gonna select that option. You can specify default value for that if you wanted to, or fallback value, basically, uh, if, if this isn't present, then it will use that value instead. You can also select if it's required or not. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to make that required. And you can make it a hidden field, uh, potentially. This would fall into place when there's inputs where, such as a landing page or, or whatnot, when you're using a form to kind of pre-populate this, this mailing list. And then the description down here just talks a little bit about uh, when stuff would be displayed, et cetera, uh, in a landing page type setup or with a form that where they can manage their their information. Keep in mind, you know, when somebody subscribes or when you send out essentially a campaign, you could have a, a button that allows them to manage their profile. So, so that's really all that we need to do here. Click save custom field. And now we have our custom field value and there's there's some kind of GUID information here, which is useful from a programming standpoint, which we'll talk about more in the future as well uh, when I get to those types of videos where I talk about programmatically making changes to this. So once we have this, uh, it would be great if we could just go back and go to our members and maybe add that information back in. So let's go back to our members area up here on the left while we're underneath mailing lists. So kind of a sub page of mailing lists is our members page. We'll click on that option and then we will see a list of all our members. Now, obviously, if you had thousands of, of members here, you wouldn't necessarily go in and, and modify these, but you would uh, potentially try to collect this information from your users in one way or another. You could use uh, email campaigns to re try to recollect it. You could try to, if this is linked to your website, which I'm hoping to do a video on in the future, um, how you can link this up and then identify users and contact. So all we need to do to, to modify this is just click on the user's name and then you'll see that I actually have a gender in here, but we also have this new field that we added um, in this session. So um, now we can select the membership sign up date. So we can select it to the future. Actually, I want to select it in the past. So June 15th. And it's going to, it's, it's saving the time as well, but I, you don't necessarily need to provide that. And that is pretty much it. So that pretty much concludes today's video. If, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. As I said, uh, we're gonna use these custom fields a little bit more as we start to talk about segments and we're gonna start talking about landing pages and things like that on how to collect that information, but then also how to use those custom fields in segmentation and in personalization of our, our email campaigns. So thank you and good luck.